Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophinet and welcome back to XCOM 2. In our Commander playthrough, we're ready to investigate the Codex brain coordinates and push this story forward in Operation Bone Mother. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take two Rangers, Kistoff and Jazz, two Grenadiers, Hugh and Cedric. And that's the team we're gonna deal with, cuz... Uh, there's not, a much, not many uh, robotic enemies in this mission, aside from the Andromedon, so we don't really need the EMP rounds. Shen and Tygen barely managed to pull these coordinates from that codex thing they had down in the shadow chamber. We're guessing this may be its origin point, but can't know for sure. Based on the fight it put up, I'd expect heavy resistance either way. Good luck down there. Thank you, Bradford, because what we are going to need because I have played this mission once before, is, uh, well, soldiers who can handle enemies up close. So that's why we have two Grenadiers and two Rangers. Uh, and Cedric is gonna be up top providing Overwatch. But yeah. A whopping 15 enemies. That's what we're uh, dealing with here. And I think most of them are gonna be chrysalids, in fact. Target coordinates are just ahead. Move to investigate the site. Hostile presence is currently unknown, but expect the worst. So I don't I'll think we... Oh, we do start in concealment. I was kind of doubting that. So uh, we have everybody in concealment now, so that's perfect, I think. Just so we can set things up. Because we are dealing with a lot of chrysalids and we don't really have a countdown timer, I'm going to be really, really careful in this mission and just move everybody up. Uh, one action at a time and put everybody on overwatch each time we do so so give me a second and I'll see you guys when the actions kicks off and of course as usual as I when I said th say that two actions later we encountered this so a Lancer normal trooper and it appears like an Andromedon is joining as well not that big of a problem I'm just gonna put everybody else closer and I'll see you guys in a second Okay, so, so I've been trying to uh, circle around the troopers that we could see, and yeah, things only got worse, because now we can see an Andromedon and an Archon, but no sign of the, uh, the chrysalids just yet, and that's, that's frankly a bit unnerving. I'm gonna keep Kistov over there, because he can keep an eye on those two over there, we're not gonna trigger them just yet, because uh, that, I think, is that two Archons? Yeah, two Archons and an Andromedon. We can't really take them out at the same time. So I'm just going to put everybody on one more round of Overwatch. And then we're going to see what happens. Okay. So yeah, this is going to be our first action then. I'm going to try and take out these three guys over here. Using at least one of the acid bombs we have available to us. Um, and yeah. Let's just start it off with that and see what happens. Because these guys don't really have a lot of places to go. They could go inside of the... Well, behind the trees. But I'm going to try and make that difficult for them. So, fire away, Yang. Fire away. And that should not trigger the two Archons and the Andromedon on the other side. Because otherwise... This might be a bit more difficult than I intended it to be. So that I think, ooh, yeah, they do quite a bit of damage. But I don't think it's going to be enough to take out either the trooper or the lancer. He's immune to acid burning, of course. And as long as nobody finds Kistov over there in the corner, we're pretty good. Um, Hugh. Those guys seem to be just standing there from over here. So I think we're just going to keep our position here as well. And just start firing away at everything we can hit. Especially the Andromedon, because he can uh, he can pose a threat to us, of course. Um, let's start it off with a pistol, a lightning hands at the trooper, just as an attempt to killing it. There we go. Thank you very much. Perfect amount of damage to take it out. Impressed yet? So that's the trooper down. Now we have a Lancer and an Andromedon we still need to uh, look for. The Andromedon is actually 80% even though he's behind full cover. Which is not that bad actually. 
Who else do we have? We have Ulrich as well. Could use Ulrich's rocket launcher to just blow away the tree here. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Ulrich rocket launcher that tree. Taking away the cover of the Andromedon. And that's very, very nice. Look at that. Nice open space for you to enjoy. A bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of lovely scenery. Um, I think I'm going to use his machine gun as well to just whittle him down. One damage. That's too bad. Because that was over 80% hit chance. But uh, we still have a few options here. I'm going to use Cedric to kill off the Andromedon. Hopefully. Because I'm not actually sure I can do this. Um... I'm gonna put... Hmm. Could put Jazz a bit closer. I'm just wondering, yeah. Behind the tree won't be a flank shot. Because he's... Where the hell is he even? Is he... Oh yeah, so he's on this side. Yeah, okay. So if I put Jazz over here, he can easily shoot at him from the other side. And then... Uh, Cedric, take a shot at the Andromedon. If you take it out right here, that would be lovely, but that's not the case, sadly. Okay, so two health left. Then what I want to do... Hmm. I'm not going to be able to take it out immediately. But I'm going to be able to use Jazz and kill the Lancer, hopefully. Thank you very much. Even a graze, but still eight damage. That was... That was lovely. That was lovely. Thank you, Jazz. The Cran de la Cran, indeed. And then we have... Ooh, this is gonna be annoying. I could use the Mimic Beacon. I really could. But if I do that, I immediately reveal Christophe, which is something I wanna... I wanna avoid. So I think I'm gonna just take out the Andromedon... Well, pilot with you. Thank you very much. Explode him away. You can even see the Archon in the background over there. Getting back up. I was hoping, of course, that there would only be one Andromedon. Because we didn't bring EMP rounds. And not even an EMP grenade, if I'm not mistaken. There's a few options here. I could use Christophe. Get him out of concealment. And use his Mimic Beacon. But that means we're going to have three extra enemies on our plate. Which I don't want to do. Because uh, we're going to get hit either way then. So I'm just going to stay on Overwatch. And see what happens. Because I'm not going to be able to keep him from doing anything. He's probably going to try and hit you. I'm on it. But let's see what happens. Ooh, this is going to be tight. Please don't. Please, please be nice. Yeah, he's gonna... Ooh, he's gonna try and hit him in the face. Please survive. Please survive. Please survive. Oh, he even misses. That is amazing. Is he standing in acid? But I think... Is he immune to acid as well? He probably isn't. Okay, so that's good. Because that means we can actually try and take him out now. Rather safely. I wouldn't say safely completely, but... Rather safely. Um... Do need to be careful that I don't trigger the other guys in the back before I completely kill that Andromedon. Because that would uh, bite me in the ass. But I think, Ulrich, this is a perfect job for you, isn't it? Double shot. Right over uh, Hugh's back. There we go. 10 damage to start with. And I might actually try, try and uh, get Hugh out of there first. Because, um, well, he's in a bit of a tight spot. I don't think he's gonna get... Poisoned if I do that. I can actually try and get inside of the building as well, but before we do that, just go over here. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, and then Ulrich, your next shot should be a nice one. Ulrich. Wait a second. Why can't I? That was Salvo, right? And he hit, so why can't I use him again? Never mind. Okay. Cedric, 100% shot, that would be too easy, right? Um, Jazz, what can you do? Can you even hit him from over here? 84, that might actually be pretty good. 
Hugh Duck. And that was a complete miss. Never you mind, then. Okay. So, Hugh. 100% shot. Might actually kill him over here. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So that means I can get a bit closer to those three guys over there and assess the, well, the risk here. Because I'm also feeling that those chrysalids are being awkwardly silent about their presence here. So Cedric has a really good position here. I might actually put him over here so he has a better shot at anything that he can see from over here. Because especially the area over there. If something tries to approach from uh, that direction. So just put him Overwatch. on Overwatch with a pistol. He's still on Overwatch with the shotgun. Yang, I might actually pull you a bit closer. Not a problem. Towards those three guys. Why can't I switch? Because you're the only one, probably. Yeah, and there we go. Another Overwatch. Because I'm really scared of, of those, uh, those chrysalids. Can we get that? Is that dissipating? Yes, it is. Okay. So, if we're quick, we could technically take the loot. I could actually go and conceal now. Because Jazz isn't going to perform really well against those guys unless it's really, really necessary. So, I'm going to conceal and get that loot over here. There we go. And now he probably has a better sight at the other... Uh, ooh... The other enemies over there. Superior Expanded Magazine Advent Data Pad and Superior Focus PCS Chip. Thank you very much. Bless you that Expanded Magazine. So now... Okay, so there's the Andromedon. And we know there's another Archon right next to them. So... I am gonna reload because I don't think Jazz has an autoloader. Just in case we need him. He's pretty safe over there in concealment. And then I think I'm just gonna take one more turn to uh, take it easy. Because I don't wanna trigger anything just yet so reload with everybody i can there we go and put everybody i can in overwatch as well even kistoff over there and then cedric hmm if i put you on overwatch if those three enemies move you might actually shoot at them but you know what that's that's just fine that's just completely fine and then we put ulrich over here yeah, there we go. Um, do I reload? I reload. I know he has an autoloader, I think. I might be mistaken. I am mistaken. Okay, so those three enemies are still over there. They're gonna keep that position, probably. And I keep hearing chrysalids running around, and I'm terrified. Really, really terrified. So, I guess I'll see you guys in a second when the action pops off. Okay, never mind. I tried a few turns to uh, to try and bait out the chrysalids, but they're not coming, are they? So, I am going to move. Uh, I, mm, I'm wondering if I can pull Yang closer to get her in a better position. If I put her here, she's going to spot something. So, yeah, well, I guess we don't really have a choice, do we? We do need to engage right now. There we go. Two Archons and an Andromeda. So I think it's high time we start using that... Uh, that Mimic Beacon in a second. So we're going to try and take out at least one Archon. Uh, and the first layer of the Andromedon. So Acid Bomb away. Because I think that should be the last of the uh, heavy armored units. So the Andromedon will be the most armored unit we still have left maybe with a bit of luck some of those scars explode although i'm not really sure i could try and use the rocket launcher as well i never actually used that one wow okay that's what they call a blast radius hmm i think i'm gonna save that just in case we can use that against the chrysalids that are still coming because i know they're still coming they might try to fool me that they're not here, but I know this mission. They are gonna be here en masse. So Acid Bomb right in the middle of the Andromedon's face. Or right next to its feet. Whatever you prefer. Because these guys have a lot of health. 
and then of course the Archon goes into Battle Frenzy. Jazz is weirdly enough not spotted yet. It looks like he should have been spotted by the Archon over there. But it seems like that's not the case. So move you a bit closer. Okay. Stuff can stay there just for now. Uh, I could set up a kill zone with Cedric, but I think the pistol shot would be nice. Especially on the Andromedon, but he's in a really good position. So why not try lightning hands on the other Archon? Ooh, six damage with a pistol. Thank you, Cedric. Now, of course, he's going to battle frenzy, but I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. So I'm going to use the sniper rifle and then some. That Andromedon is really, really dug in there. Um... And I think the Archons are a, bit of, a bigger threat at the moment. Because they're really fast and especially when they're battle frenzied they can uh, do some serious damage. So let's try and take out... Hmm... No, I should, I really should take out one of the Archons at least. Blammo! 10 damage, thank you very much Cedric. Really, really appreciate it. Um... Yeah, he's going to be pissed again. Then we have you. 78. That's actually not that good. But it's the best we're going to have with you, probably. Ooh, that was the stock damage. Do I take the risk and hope that he dies from the acid burn? Because he is, if I'm not mistaken, he is acid burn at the moment, right? So 1 to 3 damage over time. Okay, that is that is quite the risk I would take with that. These two guys are still in concealment and we still have Ulrich as well. Hmm. The main plan with Ulrich, I think, is using an incendiary bomb to try and get some burn damage in on the other Archon. So let's do that. We still have one left after that, so... Uh, no biggie, no biggie. There we go. Ooh, double critical. That's the perk in, uh, yeah, in action. Because, yeah, our explosives do have a chance to do critical damage now. I could actually fire again. And try to take out the Archon on the right. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to try and use the Mimic Beacon on this turn. Because otherwise the Andromedon is coming uh, back to life more stop damage and we're gonna be in a bit of a pickle so I'm gonna lose both of my yeah I'm gonna lose both of my uh, concealments and put a mimic beacon right over there should be in vision of all three of them just in case they all three of them would still be alive after what I'm gonna attempt me. next next yeah okay so they saw you of course of course they did I can't risk going in there because of course the, all the status effects are gonna fuck me up but I do want to take a gamble and try and shoot at the uh, Andromeda it's only 34% chance but if you can take it out all the better yeah okay that was obvious that that was gonna happen but I like a gamble every once in a while so I'm hoping they both die now. So the Andromedon... The Andromedon is free to do what he wants. Thank you. There goes the one Archon. Oh, seven damage from burning. Jesus Christ. Okay then. So might not have even needed to... Oh, shit. There we go. There we go. That's what I was afraid of. So he's immune to everything, but he gets really, really close to take care of that Mimic Beacon. At least we know where they are. Yeah, and he destroyed the cover as well. That is really, really good. Are there any more chrysalids? Just, ooh, gee, wow, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Where's the chrysalid? There's the chrysalid. I could try and just take out the chrysalid with a sniper shot. Ooh, that's not even going to do it. That is not even going to do it. Interesting. Huh. So that is the reason why I kept that... Um, that blaster from Yang. Because she could do some really, really big damage if she's able to... Uh, 
hit a group of chrysalids. But Andromedon. They're not the best of chances, but uh, we're going to try and fire twice at you. Oh, why? Come on, Ulrich. Get your act together. He'll... It looked like he took damage twice there. Oh, yes, because he missed. So now I can't use him anymore. That might have been a problem. That might have been a problem. Um, 96, but those chances are really, really high. So I do want to try and shoot at him with somebody else. Um, Cedric, first try your shot at the Aldo. I could try and take out the Chrysalid with Kristoff. What are your shots? 89, so if I do that twice, I might actually kill it. I'm gonna go for the sure thing and try to kill it with this first, because I want to kill that crystal before anything else happens. Thank you! Criticals for the win! Well, how about that? Yes, that was really, really good. So now we have Implacable. Could move him back a bit, because I think we're gonna start getting assaulted by uh, chrysalids all over the place. So, thanks for that. Goodbye, Andromedon pilot. And now, of course, that thing's gonna come back to life. And there it is. Um, I could fire again with the pistol. Uh, I'm gonna free reload first, since I can do that. Reloaded. And then just fire with the pistol at the Andromedon, giving it a bit of damage. Because we could use that. Since we got the dead from above, we could fire again. And now we have only a few guys left. Yang doesn't have salvo yet, so unless I'm able to completely take him out here, that's 100%, so that should be something at least. Seven damage, that's the lowest he could do. Then it all depends on Yang. It's a 100% shot, but he has... Oh, never mind. I think he has only 8 health left, so yeah, this should do it. Jazz Duck! Oh, wow. That was right on the edge there. Okay, then. So... That's right. I think it's best that I move Kristoff back. Because that forces the Chrysalids to go boss. through the fire if they want to reach me. And then Jazz, of course. Oh, we still had Jazz. We did? Oh, never mind. I'm gonna put Jazz on Overwatch. And I'm just gonna stay here, I think. I know we still have a bunch of... I think we still have a, a group with a shield bear in there somewhere. So I think we have at least five more chrysalids on the map, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm just slowly gonna try and move forward with Jazz, because he has the automatic melee. What? 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 The combat music started, but I can't see anything. So if that's the case, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna put everybody on Overwatch. Maybe reload a few of the guys. Uh, Cedric is still good over there. Um, put Ulrich a bit closer and then put him on Overwatch as well. Come and get me, there they are. I fucking dare you. Yep, there we go. Hello, Chrysalid. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Luckily, Cedric has a shot as well. But he misses too. Oh, shit. Come on, Yang. Come on, Yang. Come on, Yang. What? That's hitting him. No, 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 no. Is a single chrysalid gonna get here? Seriously, there's six Overwatch shots. That is something. There goes the armor. So one more hit, one oh sh! What the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? What? Did he attack or did he not attack? What the hell just happened? Okay, Jazz didn't receive any damage, so I'm gonna assume... Yeah, he... Wow, that was weird. They did that out of order. So you with the saving shot after the chrysalid attacked already. Um, you know what? That worked really, really well. I, I might do that again. So everybody back on Overwatch. I'm going to reload everybody in the next turn. But yeah, there's another one. There's stuff happening over... Is that a patrol? Oh, oh. Oh, gee, da-da. 
Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna move forward slowly, and I'll see you guys when there's uh, something happening. Okay, there we go. I'm being haunted by uh, steps of chrysalids for the past 10 minutes. Yeah, now, okay. Now Jazz got hit. Or did he? Oh, Blade Storm. Yeah, right. There we go. But I think the damage will still come back at me, I suppose. Wait. Oh. Did he hit him before? Oh, that is interesting. He can hit him before he... That is really nice. So he's my... He's my permanent buffer against Chrysalids then. Because Jazz has an ability that allows him to... There we go. Blade Storm free sword attacks on any enemies that enter or attack from melee range. And it appears that actually blocked off the Chrysalids attack. Okay, so yeah, for the last 10 minutes I've been haunted by uh, crawling Chrysalids that didn't want to appear in my sight. But apparently now one did. So I'm going to okay, move on. everybody a bit closer and... Let's... Yeah, I'm just gonna let Jazz finish him off as well. Just because we can. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Oh no, that's Ulrich. Ulrich is the German. The Austrian. I do apologize. I am so sorry if I, did, if I said that wrong. Uh-oh. Ah, okay. Never mind, see you guys in a second again. Now that we know Jazz's uh, interesting abilities, I'm just gonna let him lead the way and uh, let everybody follow in his footsteps. So we're pretty safe around here. And I think I'm gonna start moving Cedric down as well, since he might have a better position over here on top of that uh, pedestal here. Because the uh, end goal is right over here. This is what we're here for. This gate is what we're here for. But more on that in a minute. I'm just gonna move everybody uh, closer. And everybody back on Overwatch. I'm not going to skip anymore. Because uh, this is actually pretty I'm tense. Going. With those chrysalids uh, running around here. So everybody else on Overwatch. And Cedric is just going to come a bit closer. If I don't accidentally put him on Overwatch. There we no go. Problem, and there's Jazz, the last one to be on Get Overwatch. Over. I think I heard something. So that's what's been happening the past five minutes. Oh yeah. Somebody saw him. Right between those. Ooh, and that was even a hit. Thank you, Chaz. So we only killed two chrysalids. And if my estimations are correct, there are still four more chrysalids. Including this one, of course. And I think he's gonna die. Oh, shit. That was... I did expect somebody to shoot back at him. But yeah, let's put Jazz over here and see what happens. So yeah, there's one chrysalid over there. Not that big of an issue, you would think. But this is XCOM, of course, and things might always be worse than they seem. Because there are the Hugos, and there we have the gate. I'm not sure what we were expecting to find out here, but this definitely is awesome. It's not the same rift the Codex used when it appeared. This thing could lead anywhere. It may not even be pointing at Earth. As with most things, we'll likely need to bring it back to the ship for further examination. That is a problem. I didn't expect there to be, um, shit, a gatekeeper in there. That is a problem, and we used our shit. Whew, this is an issue. We used our mimic beacon already. We don't have a higher position, so our shots aren't even all that good. So I might just pull back to the, I can't even grapple back to the roof. Okay, um... I'm wondering, if I put Cedric over here... Seems doable. Do you have sight on the perch so you can pull up? No, but you do have a pistol shot on the chrysalid. I might do that to conserve ammo and actions. Yeah, there we go. Take down the chrysalid. And now we have everybody else to focus on the gatekeeper. Um, you know what? That blaster bomb I've been uh, carrying around in my pocket all this time. I think it's high time we use that. But first, Ulrich, you have shredder rounds. Um, might actually try an incendiary bomb first as well. So, bombs away. So that's gonna shred a bit. 
and hopefully... I don't know if they're vulnerable to burn damage. Are they? It appears they're not. So that was kind of a waste. Um, but I can... I think I'm gonna suppress it. Penalize targets, aim and shoot them if they move. That might not be such a bad idea. So suppression. I think that might actually be the first time we actually do suppression. Which is interesting in its own right. Um, damn. The blast. No, 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 no. Ho, 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 ho. That was, I almost confirmed twice there. Blaster bomb. Fire a guided blaster bomb at the area. There we go. The first use of the blaster bomb. Boom. Okay, six damage. Not too shabby. We still have two shotgunners as well. Uh, this might be a bit loud. I am so apologize for that and now we're gonna just shoot with everything we have because this thing needs to die because it's extremely powerful I don't think it's capable of killing any of our troops in one hit but still I don't want to take that risk I'm gonna use everything and with everything I mean every single shot we have I think it's better that we now use Kristoff next Put him as close as we can. He doesn't have cover over there, but he has over here. Underneath Ulrich's beams. And now we're going to do a rapid fire. 50-50 twice. But a very high crit chance. Oh, yes. That does take away the tree, sadly. Impressed yet? Yes, we're really, really impressed. Sadly, we couldn't use anybody else to finish him off. but Because Jazz wouldn't have done that, probably. And I'm just going to put Jazz here in the middle with an overwatch shot. Because now, yeah. I knew I counted correctly. Those are the three leftover chrysalids. And maybe one takes a shotgun blast to the face. Indeed, he does. Goodbye. I wonder how far they can go. Because I don't think... Oh, that's it. Well then. Um... Do I have any bombs left? I might have just used all my bombs on the gatekeeper. Not that that was badly spent on them. But yeah, I think I'm just going to pull back. Just going to pull back as far as we can. And let the chrysalids come to us. They are melee enemies, so they need to come to us. The closest guy I'm going to leave behind is, of course, Jazz. Since he can... Uh, easily take care of those chrysalids attacking him. Just pull everybody back. And then we're going to use, of course, the, the kill zone as well. Uh, not kill zone from Guerrilla Games, although that's, that's a lovely game as well, but we're going to use Cedric's kill zone ability. I'm going to have to guess where they're coming from. Um, I think they're kind of moving to the back there, but they, they know we're right over here, so... I don't think it's such a bad idea to guess they're gonna come through here. I put my kill zone right over there. I did forget to check how many bullets he still had in the mag. Uh, I'm not gonna put him right out in the open, Jazz. I'm just gonna put him over maybe here. I do need to make him the mo most enticing target here. And now we have a big, a giant overwatch uh, wall ready to take down any chrysalids coming too close here we go oh where the hell are those guys coming from why are they burrowing again they saw us yeah there we go shotgun blast from the other side of the map yeah didn't think that would work but we might get the cedric shot Okay, no, Christophe's first. Where the fuck were you firing at? Yeah, okay, there's the first sniper shot. Where the hell are they firing at? Is that the one over there on the left that they're firing at? But the... Oh, they killed the chrysalid. What? What is going on? I am confused. So, there goes Cedric again. Oh, and that was another miss. Okay. I hope they're going for Jazz. Okay, Yang still have it, has a shot. Oh, now that I think about it, Ulrich might have one as well. Yeah, there we go. Knew there was somebody missing. Thank you, Ulrich. Take him out. Take him out, take him out. Yes. Fuck yeah. Goodbye, Chrysalids. We exterminated the shit out of them. 
So if I count it correctly, there's only that one left. And Ulri got a promotion, so that means he's max level now. So let's reload Jazz. And now we're gonna go uh, Chrysalid hunting, I think. I'm just gonna pull back a bit from over here. You can take one shot at it, just to take down its health. There we go. A grey shot, but a shot nonetheless. And then I'm just gonna put Jazz a bit closer because he... Ooh, you can't even see him from here. Okay, never mind. Maybe a sword strike. This is freaking ballsy. I know. It's it's freaking ballsy, but 98%? Might as well try. I mean, we have everybody still available here, so... Goodbye! That was freaking awesome! And the camera doesn't know what he needs to do. Is that the last one? I might have miscounted. Yeah. God damn it, there's still something left. Probably more, probably more chrysalids. If I need to guess, I think it's gonna be more chrysalids. So moving everybody back again is not such a bad idea. Oh yeah. Keep Cedric over here in the back, and everybody back on Overwatch as they were before. So put Ulrich behind this rock here, and Overwatch will reload. Let's reload, just in case. There we go. There must be two left then. I think it's about two. Yeah, I can hear them crawling around. Where the frick are they? Seriously, are we gonna do this? I had to do this the first time around as well, because those those chrysalids just go... Okay, yeah, I think Jazz just spotted them immediately. Yeah, okay, so there's one underground. Blade Storm. But he's not even... That's not melee range, Jazz. 100%! Take him out! Goodbye! Let's go home! God damn it, what the hell was that? <laughs> this game is so buggy sometimes. Oh, there's still more. There's still more. Okay. Then let's pull everybody closer, I suppose. What was that? I heard something. What the hell was that? And the combat music started up again. Oh god, so I think this is a great opportunity for me to try this. I'm gonna put everybody on Overwatch, except for Kistoff. And then I'm gonna use Kistoff as bait and try to put him here, because I think the sound came from over there. So if I put Kistoff here, what happens? Hello? No? Okay, so let's just reload the man. And wait with an Overwatch shot in the middle of the field. There he is. I knew he was over there. You're gonna get shot out of the sky there, buddy. Yang has been really good with her overwatch shots lately. And take it out. What? Cedric, on the other hand, he has seen uh, better days. Ulrich, you had plenty of experience in this mission. But yeah, while you're at it. Yeah, bye. Thank you, Hugh, for that killing blow. That's the last one, right? Status confirmed. Thank you. All hostile contacts in the AO have been eliminated. The gateway is secure. Woo! Status confirmed. Commander, we've secured the psionic gateway, and recovery teams are en route to the site. Now it's up to Tigan and Shen to figure out what this thing does. Psionic gate retrieved in a flawless mission. 18 enemies... I knew there were more than 15. Fuck you, game 15 enemies. Oh no. Yeah, okay, so there were 15 standard enemies, and then the Gatekeeper was 16, and the two Andromedons that came back to life added two more, so that's why it's 18. Never mind. And of course, 25 turns taken, but, I mean, I could take my sweet time, so why not? So I know Uri got a promotion, that was really, really good, and it, look at Jazz. Whoa! Dealt most damage, made most attacks, and was under fire the most. So he really, this was his mission. He took out those chrysalids like he he hasn't been doing anything else the entire time. Because I think that was the first time he actually faced chrysalids. The first time he saw chrysalids, he wasn't along for the ride, I think. And Kistov, of course, moved the furthest again. Although, Jazz could have done that easily as well with his PCS, uh, his movement PCS. And there we go. Another story mission completed. 
We are uh, starting to get closer to unraveling the mysteries in the field have certainly encouraged the crew of the advent. So Ulrich is the only one with a promotion, sadly, but he is now max level. He is our newest colonel. Thank you very much. So, saturation fire, fire a cone-shaped barrage of bullets at every enemy in an area. In addition, the cover of those enemies can be damaged or destroyed. Uses a lot of ammunition. So that's really, really cool. Or rupture. A rupture shot deals critical damage and ensures that the target takes an additional plus three damage from all attacks in the future. So, this could mean a lot. Saturation fire is incredible. So fire a cone-shaped barrage of bullets at every enemy in an area. That is amazing. The cover is destroyed as well. So if you want to take out some heavily, heavily uh, taken care of enemies that they're really bunkered in there, then saturation fire is incredible to take care of them. Rupture also has a lot of uses, especially against those very tough enemies, uh, such as the gatekeepers and the like. Rupture is actually perfect to uh, weaken them enough to, uh, well, take them out in a few extra hits. But I think I'm gonna go for Saturation Fire as our first uh, upgrade for uh, our, well, our first Colonel Grenadier, because Yang might go for Rupture after that then. So Saturation Fire it is. Because Ulrich also has the, uh, the ammo to, uh, well, accommodate for that uh, ability since it uses a lot of uh, ammo. The distinctive alien artifact we recovered from the field resembles a portal or gateway of some kind. Although we believe it provides the aliens with a means of long distance travel, potentially beyond the confines of our world itself, it will take time before we can truly understand the gateway's function. So there we go, one psionic gate and then the loot we recovered and the corpses of everything we killed. Thank you Based very much. On what your team witnessed in the field, Commander. It is clear this psionic gateway provides the aliens with some means of far-off travel. It will be up to you to determine not only how it functions, but exactly where this gateway leads. So that's our next objective. We need to find out where the gateway actually leads. But uh, now that we're picking up steam, because, uh, yeah, 175 supplies and, more importantly, we reduced the avatar progress by two blocks. New objective added. So we need to install the recovered psionic gate in the shadow chamber, allowing a detailed study of the gate and where it might lead. In okay. order to analyze the alien psionic gateway we recovered, we will need to make the appropriate modifications to the shadow chamber first, Commander. That means as much as, well, the you need to upgrade. Monsters. From the very beginning, it was one failed science experiment after another. Even with the advent forces, they tried to disguise it, but they're no different underneath all that armor. And now it comes to this, an entire facility dedicated to wiping us out. And not just that, but turning us into what? Some kind of concentrate they're using for God knows. We should have known the Elders would return. We should have known they never left. There we go. Bradford with a bit of a sad message, but... So we need to upgrade the Shadow Chamber. We need 200 supplies for that. We don't have 200 supplies. No biggie. Um, we're gonna have that really, really soon. I'm gonna pay a little visit to the Black Market to get us those supplies in a minute. But, uh, do we need to do something else first? I don't think we really need to. Because we're still waiting on the Andromedon autopsy, which will be done in, well, a matter of minutes, actually. We might actually complete it while we're on our way to the uh, black market. And there we go, two more blocks removed from the Avatar Project progress. Your team has done an excellent job in the recovery of this alien artifact, Commander. I believe with further research, it may prove invaluable in uncovering the truth. Commander, remote reconnaissance indicates the aliens have a UFO hunting for our position. We need to be careful about where we pick our flight paths. Oh, that is interesting. So even without the... Uh, God damn it, even without the dark event, apparently a UFO is tracking us right now. Which could trigger an immensely dangerous mission. Uh, but I'm gonna just sell our inventory for now. You have a lot of alien alloys left and they're very interested in them for now. So I'm gonna sell about 25 of those. 
Uh, you know what, even 30. There we go, 30. 180, that is. Uh, turret rack. No. The spider suit. Yeah, you can have that, because I'm not going to use that anymore. And then, yeah, let's sell all that. Thank you very much. Shadow broker. Ooh, we spent, I think it's a thousand... S we got the thousand supplies in total for uh, selling stuff in the black market over both of my playthroughs, so that's not really that big of an, uh, an accomplishment. Anything interesting here? Seems like we have did everything we could here, so yeah. So now, I just have to take a look. So there's the UFO right now. He's at West Africa. Uh, I know you can try to avoid it. But yeah, not really sure what that's because I don't have any active dark events and still that UFO is tracking us. That is... That is interesting. Um, next up, we should make contact with New Indonesia. We don't need the alloys. Is there anything else on the map we can scan? I don't think there is. So, yeah, let's go make contact with Indonesia. Make contact. Please don't hit us with the UFO, because that might hurt us big time. Okay, it stays over there, apparently. Whew. Priority message coming oh. through, Commander. Is that the supply drop? You have made yeah. considerable Shit. progress against the aliens over the past month, Commander. I hope that your ongoing efforts will only lead to further success. So it was an amazing month. Uh, one guerrilla operation, one supply rate, one alien facility destroyed, two regions contacted, two relays installed, Avatar progress reduced by three, and we recovered the Psygate. All in the same month. That was amazing. Yeah, that was a really good month. But now... Yeah, this is gonna be a bit of an issue, I think. I'm gonna go back. Okay, so the Psy lamp, Psy lamp is operational, which is also very good. I'm gonna just check that first. Because this is also very interesting. I know it's pretty late game that I started doing this, but I don't really like Psy operatives. Uh, any rookie can be trained as a powerful Psy operative by staffing them in the Psy lab. Staffing an engineer will decrease the time of all Psy lab training projects. So let's put a soldier in here. I saved Jessie just for this. Because, uh, yeah, she's one of the character pool as well. Actually, the character my girlfriend made. And uh, we're gonna do that right here, okay? And let's put an, uh, an engineer in there as well. So let's get back. Fence Matrix is almost online, which would be really handy if we get hit by that, um, yeah, by that UFO that's hanging around the base. So, let's scan a bit further. That should complete the research. And we still have a supply drop as well. I'm gonna ignore that for now. Oh, it's over there. Yeah, I'm just gonna go over there. I think we should be able to do that. Please, please, please. Yeah, okay, so the UFO is nowhere to be seen for now. Let's continue scanning because we're gonna the see it flip-flopping all over the map. Only further our advances, Commander. The what fact does this, that this give us? This armored environmental suit is capable of functioning in combat well after the original wearer has expired is remarkable. I must consult with Shin for further study into this unusual behavior. Although I was extremely hesitant to perform an autopsy on this creature before an extensive analysis of the fumes vented with regularity from its suit, my concerns were overruled by the rest of the senior staff due to our overbearing time constraints. It was with some relief that I discovered the most common element to be argon, an otherwise harmless gas when handled properly. Although similar in size and physical structure to the muton species, the Andromedon, as it's come to be known, does not appear to be of the same genetic design as the muton. I stress design here because perhaps more so than all but the most extreme examples, the Andromedon was engineered to exist only within the confines of the environmental suit we see them wearing in the field. Destruction of this protective equipment results in a reaction similar to what we might see if a human astronaut were to remove their helmet in space. That is to say, a painful and unpleasant death within minutes. And then we get the proximity mine. Using high-tech multi-spectrum sensors, the proximity mine will self-trigger when an enemy penetrates its radius, dealing massive damage to the environment and enemy targets alike. And then the chrysalid autopsy can be completed immediately. A very interesting thing, those proximity mines, because they can actually be thrown without breaking concealment and they trigger on enemy movement. So you can throw them into a batch of enemies with everybody on Overwatch 
let the proximity mine detonate when they start moving on their turn. We get overwatch shots on all of them and then we only break concealment and it's our turn then. So that's a really, really powerful combo, but Chrysalid Soon, Autopsy. The name Chrysalid derives from assumptions made previously about the creature's unusual means of reproduction. Although rumors have long prevailed about the existence of zombies created as a byproduct of the chrysalid gestation, recent reports seem to indicate a new, equally disturbing means of propagating their species. Yeah, and that's everything he's going to tell us about that, apparently. Own intellectual curiosity is not enough to overcome my doubts as to whether or not it was really a wise decision for our troops to bring this particular specimen on board the ship. An inherently terrifying and unpleasant species to encounter by surprise, I can only admire our troops for their courage in dealing with the species known as the chrysalid. Mirroring the general form of a common arthropod, immediately noticeable is the sleek armored exoskeleton protecting its segmented body. Of particular concern for our troops are the honed points of the chrysalid's fangs and legs. Capable of inflicting critical injuries on their own, they also allow for the creature's gruesome means of rapid reproduction in the field. Although Central Officer Bradford insists that he witnessed a different equally invasive means of chrysalid gestation during the earliest days of the war, there is no evidence that such attacks still occur today. Unfortunately, unfortunately, from what he's described, I would say the aliens have actually evolved the process into a more efficient and deadly solution. The chrysalids we see today inject a venom that immediately begins softening the structure of the victim's internal organs, preparing the subject to serve as a as both the material for a gestation cocoon and as a ready supply of nutrients for the chrysalid young. Should the victim fail to receive medical support and expire, the cocoon will form shortly thereafter. Assuming the cocoon is not destroyed during the initial gestation period, we can expect up to three chrysalid young to emerge after an impressive, short, impressively short period of growth. Recent reports from the field indicate some form of burrowing behavior perhaps another evolution of past techniques. In this case likely for defensive purposes, our troops will, would be well advised to watch where they step in the future. So the biggest difference with... with blah, 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 blah. So the biggest difference with chrysalids in uh, this game compared to the previous game. In the previous game if you were infected by a chrysalid and died, you would turn into a zombie and then after a few turns you would turn into a chrysalid sprouting forth from that zombie. In this game, that doesn't happen. The corpse just lays on the ground and uh, after, well, only a few turns, if you don't destroy the corpse, there will be a lot of extra chrysalids. So more than just one will sprout forth from the cocoon. So very dangerous indeed. But we get the health, the Hellweave armor. Hellweave not only grants a bonus to soldier health, but will return damage to enemy melee attackers and grant a 100% chance to set them afire. So very, very interesting indeed. Um, next up is the research we should do in the shadow chamber. So uh, leave anyway. I'm pleased with the research advances we've made so far, but there's still so much more to learn about the aliens' motivations. Next up is the encrypted codex data. Uh, that's something we can do, I think, while we're upgrading the building, if I'm not. I'm just gonna have to try that first, because I want to upgrade that first. So for 200 supplies. Upgraded. Oh, so it just upgraded. Never mind. So let's change the shadow project into who? Psionic gate or encrypted codex data. I'm gonna do that first. So all research projects will be expanded, suspended, and then uh, you know what? I'm just gonna add the psionic gate. How many supplies do we have? We have a few. So I might actually just. Stack that. You know what? That's only really necessary. Then I need to stack that. So we need two more days for that defense matrix. I really want to have that set up. Because otherwise we're going to have a bit of a problem if that UFO strikes. But supplies! Yes, that's one day. That's two days. And now this, uh, the UFO defense can attack me. Now operational. Shen's Legacy. So that's a trophy you get when you build a room in every available slot in the Avenger. Automated defense is added to the Avenger. Uh, increase as effectiveness of automated defenses as Meralda Diaz is now available. So we might just put her in there as well. Look at that! Turrets on the Avenger! So let's put an engineer in there. Okay, there we go. And then let's just go back to the bridge and continue getting those supplies. 
because it seems like the game is granting us a bit of time, so thank you very much. I'm gonna ignore that and ignore that as well. So, uh, New Indonesia, we were scanning that as well. And there we have experimental, experimental armor complete. The plated vest. Shen has outfitted a traditional nanoscale vest with armored plating, providing an increased health boost and additional armor protection from enemy attacks. One plated vest has been added to the inventory. Let's quickly go to the proving ground and check what else we can make, because I think I want to have one of those very fancy experimental uh, powered weapons. Yeah, look at those supplies, 825 supplies. And then we have the Shred Storm Cannon, a more aggressive variant of the Shredder Gun. The Shred Storm Cannon fires razor sharp particles in a cone to devastate close proximity targets. One Shred Storm Cannon has been added to the inventory. And now we're actually out of Illyrium cores again. Not that big of a deal, of course, but uh, yeah, if we can find more Illyrium cores, there will always be handy. Um, that is good. I'm gonna give that to somebody in a minute probably uh hmm, do i give that to ulrich that might be interesting for him but let's uh, make contact with indonesia further and there we have the first training complete soul fire does guaranteed psionic damage to an organic enemy and ignores cover and armor that is wow that is one of the most powerful abilities as a start let's continue the training if i can yeah, there we go. Look Depending at that. Who you ask, she looks awesome. Considered the alien's greatest strength. Now our own psi operatives can tap into that same power. She looks freaking amazing. And I'm not saying that because she's my girlfriend. And it's, it's by the way, it's her character. So she can earn promotions by continuing to train in the psi lab. Psi operatives can still participate in all combat missions while training and will automatically resume training if they return from combat uninjured. So we can still take her out on missions, which is really good as well. So now we can, you can actually choose what the next ability is going to be. So we can go for stasis, completely stuns the target for one turn, but renders them immune to any damage or attack. Solus, the Psyopative is surrounded by an aura that immediately extinguishes or blocks any mental impairments for themselves and any nearby squad mates, which would make her uh, an excellent debuffer. Um, and then domination permanently mind control an enemy. Only one successful domination can be performed per mission. Extremely powerful. So we're gonna go for that, of course. Uh, I'm actually wondering what the upgrade does. Add another cell to the side lab, allowing an additional psyopative to train here. Not really necessary. Not really necessary, I think, because we're gonna keep just uh, Yessi as uh, our only psyopative. And there we go, we get a supply raid tossed in our lab. So let's view the raid location. It is right over there. And I'm wondering if the UFO is still flying around here. Elite officer, elite lancer, duper, sectoid archon. Shield bear viper, so mostly. Hmm, so mostly organic enemies actually, and only one sector pulled, or maybe two sector pulls. That's that might actually be a ca the case as well. But uh, let's launch that mission. For East Africa. Now it's very dangerous. We could cross paths with the UFO, although I think he might have just disappeared. I don't see him. I haven't seen him in a while now. Look at these guys, man! These guys look awesome. Um, so yeah, give me a second, I'm gonna set up everything right here. So give me a second. Oh my god, I never upgraded the gremlin. I am such an idiot. So yeah, while we're at it, uh, upgrade that and upgrade the Siam. I think I'm gonna buy another uh, one of those hell weaves as well. Because they look just so freaking awesome. I also bought one of those proximity mines. I'm gonna just, uh, well, distribute those items right now. So here we go, a bit of an unorthodox squad. Um, I put Emma in as our specialist. I upgraded the Gremlin, so she should be pretty good, pretty well equipped. She has the Skulljack and the Hazmat suit on, so they're, she's pretty well protected as well. Then we have Jazz with the Storm Gun, the Mimic Beacon and the Talon round. So we're gonna go without Kistoff this time around, which is interesting to say the least. Then we have Ulrich, completely leveled up with the Shred Storm Cannon, Proximity Mine, and to Incendiary Grenade. I'm actually doubting whether I should swap that around, might do that when we start the next episode, but uh, this is how we set up right now. 
and of course in the war suit then uh, yang with the blaster launcher then the plated armor we just created and the acid bombs um, then we have Vinny, Vinny back from uh, well two episodes ago I think with EMP rounds of course and I gave him a better scope as well hopefully improving his aim by a lot and I gave him a hell weave armor as well and then we have uh, Cedric as our secondary sniper with armor piercing rounds instead of the uh, hazmat suit but he still has the raid suit attached to his body as well but we're heading into a very difficult mission but before we do that I'm going to take a little break, so thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, don't forget to give it a thought to subscribe to my channel, because I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. So thanks again enormously for watching, and hope to see you in the next video series. Goodbye!